You're listening to One Family, What's God Doing? Where we explore what God's doing in YWAM locations throughout Virginia. We can't wait for you to find out what God's doing today. Welcome back to What's God Doing? And this month, we're going to be giving you a taste of some of the courses in YWAM Virginia Learn. Now, if you're not familiar with YWAM Virginia Learn, last year we unveiled a learning platform where we're working to make it possible for you to learn more about who God is, who he's made you to be, and what that means for your life. And these courses span everything from going deep into scripture to talk about how God created our bodies and what fitness looks like, and even ways, simple ways, to connect with God today. This week, you get a little bit more of me, as we have a segment from a course that focuses on the Holy Spirit in early church, where the Spirit invites us to hold things loosely. Holding things loosely. This is a phrase that I have said so much over the last few years. God, this job is hard, and I want to leave, but you're telling me to stay, and I'm not sure what to do. And I think I'm supposed to do this, but I'm going to hold this loosely. If you invite me to something different, I want to be ready to let go of what I think I should be holding, what I think I should be doing for the sake of trusting you. This is a big step of trusting the Spirit, because sometimes our plans are actually really good. Sometimes our plans could actually actually accomplish a lot. But God doesn't want our plans. He knows the plans he has for us. He knows what he's trying to accomplish. And the tighter we're holding on to things, the less we're holding on to him. So there's a lot of really good things that I thought I would be doing with YWAM, for example. I mentioned earlier, you don't see me very often. And part of that is because God invited my wife to step back into full-time teaching. Well, if she's full-time teaching, which is a pretty hefty job, let's hear it for teachers. Woo, go teachers. But that means I'm the on-call parent. That means if, say, we're in a pandemic and kids have to be quarantined, I'm the one that has to be home with them. If my youngest can't be at preschool or if he's having his nap times, I'm the one that has to be home for him. There's a lot of plans I had for serving on the base over the last year that I really wanted to do, would have been really helpful, but I had to hold things loosely. It can be hard to hold things loosely, but I can't tell you how much I've seen God work in that space. But it can be hard. Like I could be trying to prepare for this and my cute, adorable three-year-old will not stop crawling on me, talking to me, telling me, lean back, lean back on the sofa, which I have to sit at instead of a desk because I've got to be within the room. It has been hard (laughs) to prepare in the way that I would want to. But I've had to hold things loosely. Not do things the way that I want to, but trust God because While I'm also doing this ministry of preparing this time for all of you, I've also been called to the greater ministry of being a father to my son, right? Being a husband to my wife who is now freed to live into this gift of teaching she has. So I mentioned that there's a risk of inviting the Holy Spirit, and I felt like that picture demonstrates an object lesson that I got to live into. Because how would you want the week before a big responsibility to look? If you were about to speak at a DBS, what would you want the week before to look like? You'd probably want it to look like a lot of space and a lot of quiet so you can run through your stuff, fine tune some things, right? What you would not want it to look like is sick kids. My son had pink eye all last week and then gave it to the other kid. My, my youngest and I had COVID what, two, two or so weeks ago, so I've had COVID brain. Some of y'all know about that COVID brain. Doctor's appointments that I weren't planning. Our fridge needed to be replaced, so I had to empty the fridge out and put it into a new fridge. Unexpected shifts in schedules. Last week was not what I wanted it to look like. I was starting to feel frustrated at times. And God had to remind me, hey, Paul, who who is it that you think is supposed to be teaching this week? Because it sounds like you think it's you. I'm just an ambassador of Christ sitting up here right now. I'm supposed to be a conduit of the Spirit. Do my due diligence, like not come up here and just wing it, right? Like that's not, but to hold things loosely, right? Because I could have responded with frustration, but the Spirit had something abundantly more, right? Something more abundantly than my ideal work scenario. And the teaching actually started before the teaching started. What God was teaching about this week started last week with me starting to realize, oh man, I've actually, if I'm going to teach about the Spirit I'm being told I actually need to trust the Spirit right now when I do not have the capacity or the time to do what I want to do and what I need to do. This is the big theme for this week, is it's the Spirit. That's what I put on the first slide. 
It's how the Spirit worked, not what the disciples did, not what this, that, or the other happened. It's about how the Spirit worked. And we see these object lessons, by the way, like uh, Ezekiel. I don't know if y'all read about that, when the number of times that he had to visually enact something, like laying on his side for 430 days to visually represent something, or Hosea marrying a woman prone to adultery. Like, I was like, all right, thanks, God. <laughs> thanks for making me an object lesson for this week. The reality is, is that the Holy Spirit is real. The Holy Spirit is working. And the Holy Spirit's going to be active this week, even if my plans last week did not go like I'd hoped. And I, when I came to you, brothers, did not come proclaiming to you the testimony of God with lofty speech or wisdom, for I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling, and my speech and my message were not in plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, so that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. I wanted to read this again because this is what I want that last line to be for us. That it's not about my plausible words of wisdom, but it's a demonstration of the Spirit so that your faith might not rest in me, but in the power of God. So before we did anything else, I did want to spend some time giving that picture of not just not who I am, but who I am in light of the Spirit. Who the Spirit is in light of what He's doing in my life, because it's relevant to this time and it's relevant to you. We all have our plans. We all have our expectations. I had all a year ago. I started formulating my plans of what this week would look like, and God's changed that multiple times. And I'm having to hold it loosely. Again, at any point, God could take away all my slides because He may want to do something different. He may want to convict me. Again, I'm not like some expert teacher here. I'm. We're journeying together towards God. We're journeying together in our understanding spirit. I may be taught something or convicted of something this week. If I'm not, I might want to check my heart (laughs) because I might be operating in pride. If you enjoyed these sessions, we would love for you to dive even further in. Go into the description to learn how you can do so and how you can even help to build this out for future students. We're really grateful that you took the time to watch and for journeying with us as we together as one family explore what it means to know God and make him known. Thank you so much for joining us for this episode of One Family, What's God Doing? If you'd like to learn more about what God's doing in Virginia, visit us at ywamva.org and join us next week for more stories of God at work.